uh, especially with his meals, if he would grind up fiber, but even before his meals, grinding up fiber uh, or vegetable fiber, uh, veggie juices. In fact, his, the bulk of his calories should be coming from vegetable juices, and then he also wants to be filling up with fiber. If he falls off the wagon, needs a bunch of sugar, more fiber will help sop up that sugar or mop it up, and then also more water. Uh, and also a little bit more chromium vanadium. Sometimes that helps too. And I love alpha lipoic acid, by the way, for blood sugar issues. It's actually used as a drug in some parts of the world for blood sugar issues. You can get that at a health food store, 400 milligrams or so a day. It's a little pricey, but it's well worth it in my opinion. Uh, that's another thing for him to do. I, I'm, I'm looking at a kidney issue. If it's a prostate issue, throw in some zinc and throw in some, you know, it wouldn't hurt for everybody to throw in some zinc, uh, good fats, especially the omega-3 fats, selenium. Selenium is good for sugar too, by the way. Also, sulfur, MSM sulfur. These are all the strategies I would be using. Right, right, right. All right. Take sounds care, man. Good, good to talk yeah. to you. We'll see you next week. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you all right. All right, Robert. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. On in California. What's going on? On? Uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you about puffy eyelids. Okay. I don't know if it came about after I had my stroke, but how does it come about? Circulation. Get rid of it. Circulation, my dear, on. And this is for everybody out there who's thinking of buying a product that tells you a topical product. And I see them all the time, and it just infuriates me. Just more scammery. You know, not. Uh, it's awful. Puffy eyes or circulation, it's a sign your blood's not moving correctly. And obviously, if you had a stroke, you can see you, you know, it's understandable. But for a company to say, here's a skin product for puffy eyes, it's just more ripoff, unconscionable, unfairness anti-humanity evil it's not right puffy eyes are circulatory they're not topical and the only reason we fall for this chicanery is because we don't distinguish the skin from the stuff that's underneath the skin when we look at the skin we think it's one sheet we don't realize because it, it it's kind of counterintuitive it doesn't look like much is there but it's filled with plumbing microscopic plumbing can you imagine this on? There's microscopic plumbing, microscopic vessels, microscopic circulation under your eyelid, or, or not under, within your eyelid. You follow me? Uh-huh. And so the puffiness is a reflection of all these blood vessels that are leaking and of the blood that's not moving correctly through. Now, it's in the eyelid. Uh, your puffy eyes, I assume you mean, you, do you mean under the eye or you mean the lid or the whole under area? The eye. Under, uh, under. under the eye. It's the same idea. You can almost see how there's like a little sinkhole underneath your eye. Can you see how your eye kind of sinks in underneath there where the bone is? That's called your orbital bone where the eye sits. And if you touch underneath there, you can feel how it almost, there's like a little pooling uh, area where stuff can pool. And that's a sign the blood's not moving correctly. Now, there's lots of reasons for that. The first thing you want to do is move your blood, force it to move by oxygenation, by deep breathing, and by exercise, moving your body, getting on a rebounder. But as important is cleaning the blood. We've been, we spent the last few days talking about infl inflammation in the blood. So making sure your blood stays clean. Number one, moving it through deep breathing and moving your body. Number two, making sure that you don't have anything getting into the blood that's causing that coagulation, that clottingness. And that coagulation and clottiness, of course, is a result of, can be a result of, leaky gut syndrome. So patching up the gut with the Fucoid Z, which also is a blood thinner, by the way, making sure that you're using uh, uh, coating nutrients that can help soothe the surface of the digestive tract, aloe and noni and bone soup and mushrooms, gummy, gelatinous kinds of substances, gelatin, that can help too. Uh, bone soup is wonderful for all that. Your healthy star pack, of course, that goes without saying. Make sure you're using your omega-3 fats. Those have a blood thinning effect. And vitamin E, too, might help. Um, vitamin E might improve circulation, 400 international units a day of vitamin E. But consider it a circulatory issue on. It makes perfect sense that what happened after your stroke, or you'd notice it after your stroke. It was probably, it, the, the situation was set up for having puffy eyelids before you had your stroke, and that's probably what caused your stroke, stroke being caused by circulatory problems as well. So it sounds like you got circulatory issues on. I haven't seen you in a while, but I'm guessing you probably have issues, you may have issues with edema in your legs. Does that, do you have that as well? Yeah. So, so, well, it's all, it's the same thing. Do you understand the logic here? Uh -huh. Things aren't moving correctly and don't fall for those silly products that tell you, you rub it on and your puffiness goes away. On, I got to motivate. I got a couple more calls I want to get to. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Good to talk to you. Sharon in Santa Cruz. Is this, uh, is this my friend Sharon that I haven't talked to forever? <laughs> no, it must no. be a different Sharon. Different Sharon. Okay. Yeah, what's, that's a good name. 
That's a good name. You're right. Yes. Nice, strong name. I like that name, Sharon. Thank you. What's going on, Sharon, in Santa Cruz? So, I was calling um, on behalf of my best friend and her mother-in-law, who has been dealing with um, leaky gut syndrome for several years now. Um, and I'd heard you speak about it a few weeks ago, um, but I can't find it in the archives, and specifically about um, bone soup and how that helps rebuild the connective tissue. Oh, my goodness. It's so amazing, bone soup. Con eating connective tissue is the way we build connective tissue. It's pretty much as simple as that. When we eat connective tissue, the body absorbs those nutrients, and it can turn it into connective tissue. When we eat the building blocks of connective tissue, things like glucosamine and hyaluronic acid and chondroitin, these are the building blocks of connective tissue. Likewise, our body will uh, build connective tissue. Bone soup contains both of those things. Bone soup contains the connective tissue, and it contains connective tissue factors. We eat them. They go through our digestive system. They go into our blood, and then our blood not only uses them as raw materials, but this is the, one of the coolest things about the body. When the body sees little pieces of connective tissue, it means to the body that connective tissue is breaking down and it's time to rebuild. Little pieces of connective tissue, whether those little pieces are amino acids or whether they're glucosamine or hyaluronic acid or polysaccharides, those little pieces signal growth to the body's connective tissue because the body perceives those little pieces as a sign that there's breakdown occurring. Does that make sense how I explain that, Sharon? Yes. It's, it tells the body, oh my God, we better start building because the connective tissue is starting to break down. Breakdown always precedes building build up in the body, and if you could signal to the body through foods that there's a breakdown in the connective tissue, it will initiate the production of new connective tissue. That's the magic of bone soup, among other things. Bone soup is also a source of, uh, of easy to absorb protein. So for folks who are dealing with uh, intestinal problems, people in nursing homes, if you're on a, a diet where you need to get concentrated amounts of nutrients with very little calories, if, it, it, there's so many reasons why bone soup is incredibly important. And by the way, bone soup is set to become the next big thing. I'm predicting for this, predicting uh, uh, this for you guys. In the in coming years, maybe five or 10 years, there's gonna be bone soup for breakfast places instead of <laughs> coffee. It'll be bone soup for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You'll have all these little bone broth stores where they serve you bone soup for breakfast. And I hope that day can't come soon enough. I mean, we gotta make sure, of course, it's organic and, and clean birds. But anyway, gotta go, Sharon. Thanks okay. for your call. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Take care. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today. So much good stuff to talk about. I always forget to tell you things, and that's just how it is in the world of health and the world of nutrition. Check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com. If you wanna join the Brightside Ben team, head over to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.